Hi frogs, it's Susu. Frogs is what I'm calling you guys. You're all my frogs now. Get used to it. So you may have noticed that my last few videos have been different than usual, and that's because I'm moving in a new direction content-wise. Let me explain. I was bedridden for two weeks back in 2022, which led me to binge watch all kinds of series on various streaming platforms. My favorite at the time was Adult Swim's Ambient Swim Block, where they play music accompanied by interesting animations and abstract visuals. It was a nice way to fill the void of silence while my old skin was sloughing off to make room for the new me growing larger underneath. Episode 5 of Season 1 titled Relaxing Old Footage with Joe Para became my favorite of the series. In the episode, Joe says he takes comfort in Newton's second law of thermodynamics, which states all natural processes are irreversible and things are always moving forward. I really like this line because it reminded me of my favorite Bruce Lee quote, Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. If you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be like water, my friend. Basically, it's all about accepting and adapting to change because change is inevitable. And that's what I've been focused on in regards to my YouTube, changing and adapting my content until it becomes something I can look at without rolling my eyes. The changes, though implemented recently, have been something I've been steering towards for quite a while now. It's important to always improve, always move forward, always adapt, siphon the biomass of your past self to enrich the you of the future. And speaking of enrichment, Factor 75 delivers fresh meals to your door that are easy to just heat and eat with no prep at all, taking all the guesswork out of mealtime. No long trips to the grocery store, no weird eye contact with others while you fondle various vegetables to check for ripeness, no trouble reaching those high shelves at the store if you're short, just convenience and deliciousness. Factor 75 is perfect for those days where I don't have time to or just don't feel like cooking because that's what thralls are for, but sometimes my thralls don't understand my refined palate. So I like that Factor also has tons of options. You can get keto, vegetarian, vegan, and calorie smart meals, as well as tons of snack options, smoothies, and other interesting edible fluids. Biomass still pending, but if enough of you use my code, they might add it. Get 50% off your first Factor Box and 20% off your next month of orders using my link. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Thank you Factor75 for sponsoring this video. Moving away from Reacts is also better for my channel in the long run because showing other people's content even with credit or permission leaves you vulnerable to copyright and you're not just at the mercy of copyright laws, but also a slew of other issues with YouTube TOS that can get you banished from the platform. That's basically what happened to my friends Henry and Jeannie of the now terminated channel MXR Plays. Rest in peace. Compilation style reacts make you more likely to get secretly executed by YouTube and replaced with a family friendly robot version of you. Which is funny because YouTube seems to have no problem with reacts that are just someone sitting there watching someone else's entire YouTube video with little to no transformative elements. Reacts are quick to make, even with me compiling all the content, and people really like them. Something that can be made fast and easily consumed by the masses tends to be lucrative. For anyone with financial responsibilities, the extra money for minimal work is alluring. Bills, taxes, social security, inflation, there's a lot of burdens the average adult must shoulder. Listen, I need four models of the great unclean one. This is the fourth world sculpt of Scabia Thrax the Bloated, also known as Lord of the Blighted Pit, the Wind of Nurgle, and the Maggot Spore. He's a very big deal. This one is so I can build Rodigus the Rainfather, and the other two are so I can build the other two versions with two different heads and two different weapon sets. No, I don't want to magnetize anything. There's just so many finances to keep track of. That's why a lot of my online existence has been about what was most profitable for me at the time without going totally morally bankrupt. Yeah, I could have made a lot of money from a cryptocurrency rug pull, but would it have been worth the bad karma? Maybe, actually. Shit's expensive these days. I'm not even bothered that I didn't get to focus more on what I liked because 
ultimately, I started content creation to make extra money. Things blew up a lot bigger than I expected, and now I don't have to worry about what's the trendiest and safest option. I can relax and try new things without fear. I could maybe even disappear from the online world at this point. But before I eventually go, I'd like to leave behind something I can look back on fondly and say that I did it for fun rather than just for the money. I'm not regretful or embarrassed of my older content, I just know I can branch out and would like to give it a shot. If it fails, I'm pretty sad already, but if it doesn't fail, then cool. Before I began actually talking to people through live streams or talking at my computer so that I can share it online and reach you all, I didn't see a point in putting much of my own thoughts and ideas into the online world. My impression of most of the internet was that despite humanity being more informed than ever, thanks to all manner of different online spaces where we can communicate, connecting with each other is kind of hard. It's extremely common in the online space for people to want to show off that they care the least and make a joke of everything because that's easier than dealing with their feelings. Any displays of emotion is something to potentially pick apart and exploit. That's why it feels safer to not show anything that could be interpreted as vulnerability. When you actively care about something or someone, you're more likely to be left hurt or disappointed. Sometimes we trust the wrong people and get irrevocably fucked over, but Sometimes, things don't go horribly wrong. Prior to content creation, I had very few friends and spent most of the time with my books and my video games. I know that sounds sad and depressing, but I really enjoy doing things alone. It's peaceful, and honestly, who else can you trust more than yourself? Makes me think of that scene in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest after McMurphy gets a lobotomy. Chief smothers him to death with a pillow, and despite McMurphy barely being sentient at that point, his body instinctively flails to escape. Even when someone is no longer aware of the world around them, the body still fights to stay alive. We're wired for self-preservation, and all of us know deep down what's best for ourselves, even when we don't want to admit it or lack the confidence to trust our own judgment. That's why I can be comfortable alone. I know I got my back and that no one will smother me to death with a pillow. I also became interested in doing more with my content because when I focused only on making photos, people created a personality for me and then complained about their own fabrication. This was all due to them overreacting to their boners, just like how in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Frollo wanted to kill Esmeralda because she wouldn't bang him. It was clear that even if I said nothing and just smiled at the camera, people would still find something to be upset about even if they had to make it up. Now, people can get upset about what I actually have to say. However, sharing your beliefs comes with its own can of worms. When you put your thoughts and opinions out there, no matter how inconsequential they are, there's a risk of people forming unhealthy attachments. The internet has coined the phrase parasocial to describe this. I dealt with a bit of the old parasocial Andes while I streamed, especially when I started incorporating my friends into my content more often. I know I mentioned earlier that I didn't have many friends and enjoyed being alone. Well, that's still partially true. Now I have quite a few friends. I still really like my alone time, but I also equally like the time I spend with them. Okay, maybe I like hanging out with my friends now a bit more than being alone. Oh, ew, I just shared my feelings on the internet. Luckily for me, no one was parasocial to the point where it became a serious issue. As much fun as we all had together and as positive as our communities were, nothing lasts forever. Some of my friends moved away or changed career paths and couldn't really be there to be a part of my Twitch anymore. We all keep in touch, but a lot of us are doing different things now and that's just part of life. I continued on and met tons of other creators, but that's when a lot of things were put into perspective which played a role in me changing from Twitch to YouTube. And before anyone gets the wrong idea, this isn't about to turn into a call out towards any content creators. I've actually had overwhelmingly positive experiences with other streamers. One time, Emiru took me to Denny's. So it wasn't the streamers themselves that were a problem for me. The issue was that I got a good look at how deep the parasocial rabbit hole goes on Twitch. Streamers and orgs or with ties to anyone with large fan bases end up being the focus of obsessive gossip which sometimes results in fans resorting to actual stalking to get answers they aren't entitled to. And we've all seen streamers' safety put in jeopardy with false calls to the police and even swatting. I know this ties in with celebrity culture, but streamers often don't have the same separation between their audience as other celebrities, no matter how rich or famous they are because 
their job is to talk to their fan base live. And that live aspect turns the insanity up to 11. I also don't believe in the toxic mentality that glorifies content creators putting themselves at risk physically, mentally, or whatever for the sake of clout and coins. Like that Twitch streamer who stayed awake for days on end and was in such bad condition that they were banned off the platform only to then move to kick and get banned there too. I hope the bans stop things from turning out like the Russian sleep experiment. That scenario was certainly their personal choice, and many people did condemn it, but moments like that in the live streaming sphere specifically come from this need to outdo whoever is getting the most attention. And usually the people getting the most attention are the ones doing the most insane stunts. In addition to all that, I ultimately didn't like the choices Twitch was making as a company, and all that coupled with the fact that I was getting better opportunities on YouTube made me decide to distance myself from live streaming altogether. And I know I never made a formal announcement saying I was leaving Twitch, but that's because there's a chance things might change for the better. If I ever did return to streaming though, I do things a little differently the second time around. Twitch wasn't a bad experience, but it made me aware of issues I didn't want to have and brought about a lot of things I hadn't had to deal with when I was just posting photos. For example, I've had a multitude of unfortunate love confessions from people who don't know me but presume to know me because they saw me speaking and moving live on their computer screen. I don't mean like a normal little crush, I mean the Pentagon is beaming codes into my brain and I deciphered them and those codes said we need to get married so here's my full address, name, social security number, and the rights to my firstborn child. So make sure you ring twice and knock five times so I know it's you and not the aliens coming to get me. I'm telling you, that live aspect of streaming really brings out the weirdness. And with all the people who sent these misguided love confessions, I can confidently say none actually listened to the words I said. They saw me moving around in their picture box and thought I was pretty and that's all that mattered. Once again, making up who they thought I was and having their fantasy version of me fit their own narrative and desires rather than accepting reality. The reality being, they don't know me, I don't know them, there's no romantic connection between us, and I will not love them. It makes me feel like an eldritch horror because perceiving me drives people mad. I create content to entertain, not to bear my soul, so I'm not sure how people convince themselves of these deep connections with me that don't exist, unless my eldritch horror theory is true and seeing me actually does make people go insane. Whatever the case, I'm not about to emotionally goatsy myself for the world wide web. The way I see it, the more details about yourself you share, and the more you take influence from others online, the closer you are to becoming Chris Chan. But if people can become parasocial based on their own fabricated reality, then there's no stopping it. Crazy people don't wait for a cordial invitation to obsess over someone on the internet, they just go for it. All we can do is take precautions to minimize the harm of others' lunacy in our own lives. My precaution is the Remington V3 Field Sport 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun. Amen, brother. Sometimes I held back my genuine interests from my videos and my Twitch streams in favor of what got the higher views and what paid the best. I still had fun, but now I'm having more fun doing video essays and commentary. It's enjoyable to research a topic I find interesting and to talk about things I like or find fascinating. So I'm working towards making content that's truer to my interests. And you know what? Some of those interests are, they're unpopular. Some of those interests are strange in a way that will absolutely make people viscerally uncomfortable. People love to give the polite answer and say, Susu, we'll support any type of video you make. Yeah, well, we'll see if that's true when I finally make that video about the secret world of tapeworm fetishes. Hmm? Or when I share the thoughts that keep me awake at night. One nagging concern I have is worrying about the concept of reincarnation. There's no solid evidence that it's real, but enough people believe in it for me to consider it possible. What if I get reincarnated during the American gold rush and strike it big panning for gold, 
only to die of dysentery immediately after. What if I have to live the life of every other person who has ever been or ever will be and experience every instance of torment and terror that has occurred throughout the entirety of mankind's existence? This thought was born from a short story I read that I don't remember the name of. It wasn't even a horror story, but it was one of the most frightening concepts I've ever read about. The protagonist dies and meets a being in the afterlife. He asks the being what they are and they tell him that once he has lived every life of every human on earth until the end of time, he will become the same as them. What that entails is never totally explored. The being also says that reincarnation doesn't follow a linear timeline, and he's about to reincarnate as a girl in ancient China. If someone knows this short story, please tell me in the comments. I'd love to reread it. I have a vast repertoire of disturbing thoughts about the afterlife, but I shouldn't dump that all onto people who click this video unprepared to take my massive existential girth. Anyway, the shift from React content to commentary has been refreshing for me, even if there's times that I don't upload for a while. The way I see it is if I'm experiencing creative constipation and need more time to research, then it's better for me to take my time so my work doesn't come off rushed and careless. So far, the new direction has also improved community involvement in the comment section. It's awesome seeing you guys chatting and sharing your thoughts and opinions with each other. I hope you all like this change, and if you don't like it, there's a million other channels to choose from. And you know what, I, I won't even say reacts are totally off the table, but they won't be my focus anymore. Video's over now, fuck off.